Hey guys, welcome back to the Outjeeping YouTube channel. My name's Austin, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a little maintenance on some drum brakes. Now today, we're going to be working on my 1999 Jeep Cherokee, showing you how to make sure your brakes are in top shape, so that way they're performing the best they can as you're going down the road. So, let's get started. So as you guys will probably know, about a year and a half ago, I did a video on rebuilding these rear brakes completely, um, such as uh, new shoes, drums, and hardware, and lubed everything up. Um, and they're supposed to self-adjust by the design of them by themselves. But if you live in a rust belt like I do, um, a couple winters, it might lock up some uh, hardware in there, and it won't be able to self-adjust as these shoes wear over time. So it's always good to go in there every year or every two years um, just to make sure everything's working properly, that you have no uh, broken linkages or springs or such that's floating around in there. So before we're getting started, I went and picked up just a hardware kit right here. They run about five bucks and it's good for all the hardware for both sides. And uh, basically if I have any broken stuff, I can just take apart from here and replace it. Or if it's looking a little bit questionable, I have a peace of mind knowing that I can replace it right here. I'm also going to go in there and lube up any uh, places that are in contact with the uh, shoes because they have to move back and forth. So there's contact points on that backing plate, which I'm going to show you in a little bit. So we're going to need a little bit of anti-seize and a uh, possibly a wire brush if there's any rust buildup. And I'm also going to be repainting the drums. Um, they are relatively new, um, but there's a little bit of rust forming on there and it doesn't look too good behind brand new wheels. So I'm going to clean it up a little bit with a wire brush and just spray it with some caliper paint right here and it should last a lot longer. Other than that, we're just basically going to be using uh, basic hand tools um, such as pliers, screwdrivers and such, and uh, anything to get a wheel off and jack it up in the air. So let's head over to the Jeep. We're going to chalk the tires, uh, lift up the rear axle, and take off both sides at the same time. That's going to definitely help us because we're going to be doing one drum at a time to see how much uh, drag we have when we adjust our drums. So let's head over to the Jeep. All right, so I got the front wheels chalked up. I'm going to jack up the rear axle by the center diff, put some jack sands on either side, and then take off the wheels. By the way, if you guys are wondering what I did with the tire and wheel combo, I went with Falcon uh, Wild Peak AT3s. These are 31 by 10 and a half by 15s on some uh, 15 by 8 um, Rubicon Extreme Quadratech wheels. I'll post a link in the description if you guys are interested. But overall, um, I think I got 6,000 miles on these, and so far they're wearing perfectly. All right, so we got the tires and wheels off, this thing jacked up in the air, and as you can tell already, we barely got any drag on these drums, and uh, since they're new, these are nice and loose, we don't have to worry about breaking them free, but if you're worried about breaking your drums free, you can tap on the sides with a hammer, you just want to be careful you don't crack them, because if you crack them, you got to get new ones, and uh, make sure you don't hit any of the weights, because uh, to balance these from the factory, they sometimes use some weights on the outside, so you want to be careful for that. You can also spray some penetrating oil, um, around this uh, hub right here as well as on the lugs and it'll kind of seep uh, through the backside and help kind of break that free. So to give a little bit of background on drum brakes, um, since they are a little bit self-adjusting over time and how to tell if you actually need to adjust them yourself um, other than just routine maintenance. Um, one thing I've noticed when driving is that the pedal travel actually goes down further. So if you notice when you're braking, um, there's a lot of pedal travel before you actually start feeling the brakes. Um, that's because your rear brakes or wherever you have drum brakes is out of adjustment. Um, basically what is happening as you're pushing down your pedal, all that fluid is filling up the cylinder inside the drum brakes here. Um, and it's taking up any of that space in between the shoes and the drums. So to adjust them, we want to basically start off with the shoes closer to the drums so we don't have that extra fluid filling up that cylinder to be able to expand it out. 
um, everything's going to be closer and tighter so that way your brake pedal is going to be nice and firm on top but for me i'm using this jeep as a daily driver so i go about 80 miles a day so i got a lot of driving to do i want these to perform the best they can since they are pretty much new um, so you just have to go in here and uh, touch it up a little bit so i'm going to pull off this drum right here now if this is going to be a drum that you're doing on a jeep that's going to be on there for a while sometimes even if you do break it free you're going to find out if you pull it off it's going to be stuck on here and what's actually happening is the shoes are catching on a ridge that's on the back side of the drum so the shoes uh, wear a pattern into the inside of the drums and there's actually a small ridge on the back side that doesn't get that uh, shoe contact point and that point since it's not contacted by anything it actually is just exposed to the air and uh, water salt whatever and it actually starts to rust and that rust uh, creates a nice big ridge on there so it's kind of hard to pull it off now if you do have this issue what you can do um, besides just brute force is actually to go from the back side um, I'm going to show you how to do this later when we adjust these but there's going to be a little rubber plug most likely on the bottom of the backing plate you want to pull that out and then you have a star adjuster screw that's in there you can take a screwdriver and spin that one way and that's going to adjust the shoes to go inward more so it can be able to clear that little rust ridge on the inside and there might be another issue if you do live in a rust belt or if it's just uh, seized up um, that that thing is not going to be able to want to move at all so in that case you're going to have to uh, pretty much force this thing off the best you can without trying to do too much damage so I'm going to go and pull this off and so far at first glance we're actually looking pretty good just some typical brake dust build up that's in there the pads are actually looking still in good shape um, but I'm going to go through everything and uh, make sure it's uh, working good but I'm probably going to take off some of this components right here so we can re-grease the contact points between the shoes and the backing plate because as you're uh, braking they're going back and forth and they're wearing on each other we don't want that season up and get rusty we want it to be able to move nice and freely now taking a look at the drum this was that ridge I was talking about right here it's about a quarter of an inch it doesn't get the shoe on there I can feel a little bit of rust on mine it's not significant so I'm not going to worry about that too much but if you got uh, a little bit older drums you might want to uh, take some sandpaper or a wire wheel just to clean off the little ridge so it's easier to slide on when you're readjusting if you're reusing your drums. But as you can tell on these uh, power stop drums they're not too bad. Um, a little bit of rust is kind of showing through after two years in the uh, Wisconsin winter so I'm just going to quickly uh, take a wire wheel to it clean off any of that rust right here and spray it with some caliper paint and it'll be nice and black and then uh, by the time we assemble everything these should be dry if we do it right now. Alright, so I've got the drums all cleaned up and painted them outside and they're drying right there for now. So now we can start to tackle this. I'm going to go through with some brake clean and just spray off everything, get all this uh, brake dust out of here um, so that way it doesn't get all over our hands and we can see what we're really working at. So i got a catch pan underneath. So as that's stripping off and drying out, I'm going to take some pictures with my phone um, so that way I know where all the locations for all the springs and retainers go into the place. So that way I have reference on there and I'm only going to be doing one side at a time. That way in case I don't have those photos, I can always reference the other side because it's going to be the exact same except a mirror opposite. But the reason why I'm going through and uh, starting to take off all the stuff is because I want to get the shoes off so I can re-grease the contact points on the back side over here and just to make sure that there's no broken components that I can't see that are broken in here. Another thing you'll notice if your drum brakes are out of adjustment um, is after it rains or if it's really humid out or if you haven't driven the Jeep or vehicle in a while, um, if it's out of adjustment, a lot of times uh, either surface rust or this uh, brake dust kind of builds up um, onto the pads and the drum itself so when you actually start going down the road the first few stops you're going to feel your drum brakes right away they're going to catch really easily because um, there's that extra friction on there and it's going to stick a lot sometimes you'll even get it where you actually lock up your wheels with barely any brake pressure on there so it's always good just to clean it through get all that extra brake dust out of here um, and start with a clean slate when we go and uh, refreshing this up all right so i took some pictures so 
Hopefully, I should be able to put this back together. I'm not going to go too far in depth on where every spring goes. If you guys want to know how to do that, I got a video on rebuilding brakes. Right now, we're just doing maintenance, so I'm going to take this off, and uh, we'll get to the key points where we need to really address. Best way I've done with doing this is just a uh, vice grips on here. People like using the screwdriver method, but it always takes a few tries, but this, I always get the first try. It's nice and simple, easy to do. And as I'm taking out the parts, it's always good practice just to lay them out where they were in here so it gives you a little bit better idea on how this goes back together. Now for these guys, I just take a pliers, twist it, hold it from the back side, drop it in the oil pan. And sometimes you can take this out mostly as a whole unit, the bottom uh, adjuster. Usually they like to stay into place, so I'm going to see if I can do that. You're ready to take off the emergency brake bracket. That's just going to come out of there, and we can actually take this off like here, so that's going to save us some time. Then we got our cross bar over here. And the parking brake bracket we can just leave right there. All right, so now taking a closer look at our backing plate, you can see right here where it's that lighter rust color. On each side, we have three contact points, one here, 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 and then three on the other side. And I'm really glad that I'm going through this because as you can see, um, this is pretty much rusted over again. There's no uh, anti-seize or grease on here. And as you guys saw when I rebuilt this before, um, I put a lot of anti-seize on there. So that's obviously worn off. So we're gonna go through here, clean it up with a wire brush, um, put some anti-seize on there and then we can start the reassembly and replace any components that we need to. Alright, so with those points all cleaned off, I'm going to take some anti-seize and put it onto the contact points. That's going to help um, with all the uh, sliding back and forth every time you hit the brakes and to hopefully help any corrosion um, from it building up and the shoes sticking onto the backing plate. All right, so focusing back onto our shoe assembly, I'm gonna take off our self adjuster right down here. This is a star gear and it's supposed to move back and forth just like this. Um, so this one's probably fine, but I'm gonna go in there and add a little bit of grease so that way this thing doesn't seize up in the future. So we just got one spring in the bottom, pull that out. I'm just gonna set this to the side and then our star piece is gonna come undone. This end over here is supposed to come out and move freely we can use a little bit more grease on there, and this part over here is threaded. So as you can see, there's not a whole lot of threads uh, sticking out over here, so this thing wasn't really expanding that much, so it wasn't really self-adjusting. So we're going to take this out and clean off all the threads, put some uh, brake grease in here, and then it should be ready to go back in. I'm going to take our grease, put it on all the threads, a little on the inside here, and then screw it back into place. All right, so with that greased up, we're going to stick this back into here, and then we can take our shoe assembly, put it back onto the backing plate, and start connecting all of our components again. We want to make sure we have this orientated in the right way. It goes into its correct holders. I'm going to leave this uh, cable right here out for now. It's going to be a little bit easier when we get this installed. So when we put this on, we got to make sure that our parking brake bracket goes into the slot on the rear shoe. And now with our spanner piece, the uh, spring over here, um, still pretty good. Um, Actually, I could probably reuse that, but I've just got a new one, I'm a little bit less rusty. I'm just going to throw in there since I have this kit right here. Now I'm going to sneak this back into its spot. 
Next thing we need to do is put our retainers back in. They basically look like a long nail. Um, for these, I like to replace them since I've seen them get pretty crusty and they snap. And if that snaps, then your brakes are pretty out of whack. So we got new ones. I'm definitely going to put some new ones in here. So as you can see, it's starting to rust from the back side where it was exposed on the back side of the backing plate. All right, so we're making our way through. I got everything buttoned up down here. Got the uh, backing plate supports in. They're a little uh, tricky sometimes, but I found it best actually just to use these needle nose vice grips to lock the locking plate onto this and then push it in with the coil spring and then uh, have your finger on the back side pushing in that support piece and then twist it on there and that seems to work the best um, compared to use pliers because they like to slip off. Um, but just one last thing you have to worry about when installing these. But I got everything routed. One last place I'm going to put some anti-seize is actually up here where the pads kind of rest on. So I'm going to put some anti-seize up there. I also did put a little bit of anti-seize on the adjuster ends, um, the fork ends where they actually meet each side of the shoe because as you're braking, it's going to be a slight pivoting motion um, between those joints right there. So we don't want that season up as well. Now I'm going to take the spring and hook it onto the top here. Then we got this other side, and as I'm putting this one in, I want to make sure the spanner piece is going in its correct location. It likes to pop out and push the pads apart. Wiggle that forward. There we go. I'm just going to hold that as I fish this guy through the hole, and then we just got to pop this guy in. There we go. Make sure that's seated all the way in. That's pretty much it for assembling knolls. Once again, if you want some uh, greater detail, I got a video going over how to uh, set up these brakes. Now with everything looped up, we're going to put the drum back on and uh, readjust it so that way it's ready to go for where we drive it. Real quickly, I'm going to go through the other side, get that to where this is at over here, and then those uh, drums should be nice and dry, and then we'll get the ready to throw them on. Alright, so I got the other side finished, and these are all painted up nicely, so I'm going to throw them on here, and then we can adjust the drum brakes. Looks like we need to back off just a little bit on our star adjuster. Alright, that's looking pretty good. We're going to head to the back side of the backing plate and we're going to go into that little access hole and adjust this properly. As you can hear right now, there's a little bit of drag, but there's a little technique I want to show you guys that I've actually seen from another YouTuber. So let's go in the back and take a look. Alright, so on the back side of the backing plate, we have a rubber plug right here, which is covering our access hole. So we can take a flat screwdriver and pop that guy out. And within here, we have the teeth on our adjuster. So to expand the pads out so they're going to be closer in contact with the drum, we're going to turn the wheel down. So we want to take our adjuster and start uh, going down. You'll hear it click against the lock so that way it can't go back the other way. Now if you take a closer look right here, I apologize about the camera angle. The jack stand is actually right in the way where I need it. Uh, but you can see the star wheel in there, that little silver piece. And when we adjust this, um, we're going to be constantly going back and forth, um, seeing how much resistance is on the uh, drum. We just want a little bit of drag on there, nothing significant because we don't want the brakes uh, burning them up right away the first drive we go down the road. But a little trick um, that I actually uh, got from Junkyard Digs YouTube channel, I'll post a link in the description below, um, he pointed out that you can actually take this adjuster and slide it left to right. Um, so it actually might mess with you a little bit because you start adjusting and you notice a little resistance and hear it on the drum, um, but only one side could actually be um, pressing up against that drum. So if you uh, go back and forth with the adjuster, you notice there's still some slop um, going left to right. You want to work that slop out of there so that's minimal. So that way you're getting uh, drag on both shoes on both sides of the drum. So we're going to keep that in mind as we adjust this. So for me, there's actually not a whole lot of slop um, going back and forth between this. So I'm just going to start adjusting this downward and we'll keep checking it and see how much tension is on our drum. Test it. Have a little bit of resistance. Now I'm going to check back and forth from left to right. So there's still a little play. 
So I'm going to take this down a little bit more. Now I'm going to test it again. It's got a little, but it can go a little bit more. And that might be a good starting place um, to start off with. If you have it too tight, you're going to overheat your brakes um, right away. They might be smoking a little bit, but if you don't want to tighten it up too much, um, take it for a test drive. If there's a lot of pedal travel before you brake, then you can come back here and simply just pop off this uh, rubber cap and adjust it a little bit more. Um, but I'm going to leave it, start off right here, and after I drive it, I might come back and adjust it if I need to. But for now, we'll put this cap right back on here and I'm going to go do the other side off camera and that's pretty much it for uh, maintaining these drum brakes. Now one last thing I want to mention when adjusting the drum brakes is you want to do one side at a time meaning you don't want the drum to be on the other opposite end over there because if you have an open differential or a solid differential basically you're going to be feeling the drag of the opposing brake as well. Now if you have an open differential you can drop it into neutral and it'll actually spin the drivetrain um, meaning drive shaft and transfer case and all that other stuff, but that also has some resistance to it as well. So it might be hard to tell how much resistance is really on your drum. So best thing to do if you're able to and have uh, brand new drums, pop the other side off that you just readjusted and then go and do the other side and then slip it back on here when you're all done. All right guys, that's gonna do it for today's quick video. Hopefully you guys were able to follow along if you're doing this on your own vehicle. Um, as you saw, it wasn't really too bad in my Jeep. I only had to really just lube up a couple things and readjust my brakes and I'm ready to go. But if you're gonna tackle this yourself, I would definitely recommend buying a Harbor kit. And if you never touch your drum brakes, let's say within the last four years or so, it might be a good idea to go ahead and order a new uh, star adjuster because those more than likely will be rusted solid. But as always, if you guys have any questions or comments, make sure to post them below and I'll be happy to answer. I'll also post all the links to all the parts that I got in this video so you guys can find it for yourselves. You guys are going to want to stay tuned because we got a lot of big things coming up here on the channel. we got to finish that lift can on the J10, get some wheels and tires on that thing and have it looking good, as well as some other things for the Jeep Cherokee. As you guys can tell, we're in a different location. We're at the new permanent out jeeping garage. So filming from now on is going to be in a better environment, better lighting. We're going to be doing some upgrades in here as well, so it's better for you guys watching at home. So if you guys like this video and found it helpful, make sure to like and subscribe to the out jeeping YouTube channel, and make sure you hit that bell button so you guys get notified every time we post a new video. So I want to thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.